Hi everyone, my name is Jess and today I have a special guest named James Holes and he is going to talk about sales enablement, how to be the best tech sales rep, and so much more. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. It would help me out a lot. And you'll be reminded that every single Monday I do post new content. Okay, so you are here because you are excited, just like me, to hear the conversation with James. He is a senior director here at Dell, managing the native edge everywhere from EMEA to APJ and basically everywhere except the Americas. So take a listen to the conversation we're having and I hope you get a lot out of it. All right, so James, welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming on. We're really gonna get things started talking about your career in tech sales and what really initially attracted you to this field. I don't know, has it been 26 years at Dell? Coming up to 25. So 25 anyway, years. Just, yeah, thanks for inviting me onto your podcast. I have been watching the videos across all the reviews and going around Dell Tech World, and it's been great. Really, really interesting. Thank you for all your support. And um, really what the audience, I think today, and I got some questions even through Instagram, I said that I would be having a very senior tech sales leader on my channel who is responsible for Native Edge. He is within our overall department, but James, you cover, I think, UK, Europe, APJ, everything that's not North America, right? Exactly, yeah. So uh, I cover everything that's not North America and LATAM, so the full of EMEA through to APJ. So yeah, a lot of countries, a lot of languages, <laughs> and uh, very, very different time zones, but um, great learnings and great people. Yeah, I think I'll probably dive into, not now, but how do you even manage all those time zones? I think what we'll kick off with is maybe just do a quick introduction of who you are, how did you get into the whole Dell world 25 years ago? And uh, was it by accident that you went into tech sales or just maybe walk us through that journey? Yeah, so it's a really interesting story. Um, you know, when I was at school, um, IT really wasn't at the forefront, right? They were just cancelling things down, like being a mechanic or a carpenter. So IT was just kind of coming through, but it was at a very, very basic level. Uh, sales always interested me. Um, so I went into the easiest route for me to get into sales was uh, with a local estate agent, as you as you call it, uh, realtor. I think that's the the right terminology. Right. Yeah. And 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 I I was selling houses, and I'd go to some properties that were pipe dreams. And I remember selling a house to to a person, and uh, it was a beautiful property, and asked them what they did, and they said they worked at Dell. Um, never heard of Dell. So I spent some time researching and I thought, right, if I want to achieve that goal, I need to make that jump into IT sales. So I um, didn't get straight into Dell. I went into telemarketing, you know, that three hours on the phone, <laughs> hundred calls a day, Yeah. that going to bed on a Sunday, dreading to wake up on a Monday and just hear no, 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 no. And having the phone put down on you. Uh, and after some time, I uh, eventually got an interview at Dell. Um, and that was, yeah, 24 and a half years ago. And wow. I started off as, a, as an ISR, so an inside sales rep. So did you have to make dials as well when you first started? We made dials, but there was inbound and, and outbound. So you got the right. benefit of, of calling out from acquisitional business, but also some retention and development accounts as well. I started off in our public sector team, selling into education, moving into healthcare, um, and then really got the appetite to move into field sales question for anyone going into sales do you think that experience of that telemarketing cold calling is crucial it, it was a game changer um, and at the time over when we had the pandemic of covid you could really tell the people that had built the foundation through tele sales and internal sales to those that had sort of parachuted in at the external level right. um, the team members that had that they, they got quite comfortable they were used to calling customers speaking over this level of communication where some of the other team members they, they really struggled because they used yeah. that face-to-face -face interaction so I'm a great believer and primarily I always try and recruit people that have been through that path I think it yeah. that outbound 
that ability to make those dials sets you up in whatever level of sales you go to. And so many people want to skip this part because it's so uncomfortable to make 50, 100 dials a day and hearing no 90% of the time. And it's awkward, especially if you're in the office and you get rejection all the time. Um, you kind of just have to push through that feeling, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I think the one thing is, if you're going to be a success in our industries, you need to learn your craft. Um, yes. And if you understand the process from the beginning to the end, it just makes you more successful. I think it puts you in that position where you are and, and we are now when you're in front of the customers. You understand, does yes really mean yes? And when no really means no. So you yeah. don't over promise and under deliver. Um, and you, you, you're really, 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 really relevant to the customers, I believe, when you when you put that foundation in place. Agreed. Totally agree. And so key skill, cold calling, tele tele sales, if, if that's what we're calling it. And is there any other key skills that you think attributed to, you know, your success at Dell? Yeah, I think the key thing is, right, is being inquisitive, but being inquisitive and staying humble um and, and trying to be relevant um one of the key things that i've always enjoyed is i've never been a subject matter expert but i've oh, always yeah. been able to walk myself into the customer's shoes so when you turn up you don't give them the corporate spiel you really really customize the way that you talk to the customers so you understand what are the kpis they're trying to achieve you know how can you help them be more successful inside their organization so the key thing is when you turn up to a customer be relevant right well how do you stay relevant this might be a a question for the more 10 year sales people how do you stay relevant and up to date when you're in the industry for so long and not be jaded and not want to learn something new because we see that all the time right i think and one thing that I always have is, is understand that you're in a lucky position, right? Yeah. So always have that that level of humbleness, right? That actually, do you know what? You may have the backing of a big organization. You may have some of the best products in the marketplace, but customers have choice. Right. So you've got to be, you've got to really, really put the effort in. You've got to tr truly understand your brief. Um, so when you turn up to that customer, don't just push the, the corporate pitch. Right. Right. But make how do you stay like how do you stay humble? Because the the hard thing for me and probably some people watching is like when you crush that sales call or you do super well and uh, you're actively listening and you know you're brief, how do you like is there is there a self-talk that you do at night to ensure that the next day you're gonna, you know, come to work and be humble? Like how do you balance that out? There, I uh, think yeah, the, the truth is right some of that can be upbringing and I think that you, you understand the position you're in when you've done those hard yards that cold calling those tele sales right and you've been through that position when you're in the field you're in a you're in a you're in a very privileged position uh, and some right. people it does go to their heads um, but yeah. I think if you've always got that level of understanding that actually do you know what the effort you put in you learnt your craft right you don't go to right. a person to fix your car who's never actually made the tea yeah right a person yep. who's cleared up afterwards so you know I always in my head remember that much younger person and remember you know that the lessons that I went through that hopefully gives me that more humble lens when I'm talking to the customers and, and I understand how lucky we are yeah. um, we're in a very privileged position that we get to go out and talk to people we get to travel we get to go to industry events and the beautiful thing I think that makes us humble is we always, always get the ability to learn. And if you go into your role every single day, believing that every day is a school day, I think it makes you relevant. Nobody like knows that. Everything. Every day is a school day. I love that. That's a hundred percent. Well, that actually is a really good segue to the next question, which there's so many questions that come up of, okay, Jess, you've been in sales. How do you learn, right? Uh, where they're they're coming from either marketing field or like marketing studies or business studies, and they're fresh out of school. I think you manage some fresh out of school, maybe three years out of school type of uh, account executives. How do you prepare for that? I guess what education would you recommend for those young I mean, folks? 
to be honest with you, as we were talking earlier, I'm learning from some of those young folks as well, right? Because <laughs> they're telling me around applications and things to make my life work balance smarter. Yes. But I, 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 I would just say to them, right, pick a really good mentor. Don't pick an obvious right. mentor. Pick somebody who's outside of your traditional career path. Um, you know, if you want to go into sales, maybe don't go to a sales manager, go to a sales leader, someone slightly higher up the, the path right. or speak to somebody in, in finance or speak to somebody around there that can give you not just that sales acumen, but business acumen, technical acumen. So, you know, I, I always suggest that, that, that get a very, very strong mentor, somebody who um, wants to listen as well as help you learn. Right. Yeah. The I like that, though. Don't pick the obvious. I think. I always pick the obvious mentor and, and finding someone in finance or even at the customer end, right? A vendor, someone else uh, that has a different viewpoint than a sales maker. That's really yeah. good. My, my last mentor. Yeah. My Good last line. mentor was uh, somebody who worked in our business operations, uh, oh, yeah. a very, very senior level, because I wanted to understand more around how things actually physically worked because right understanding that mechanism I just think made me stronger when I was in front of the customer understanding what we can and what we can't do but you know they very much have a finance lens on it as well but also mentorship from people in, in product you know understand how these things are put together understand right. the supply chain it just gives you that much wider uh, level of conversation and understanding that the customer then I believe can build more trust with you yes yes and on, on students, I find, or not students, I would say fresh graduates out of school. I find they're very eager to learn and very eager to climb the corporate ladder. I get a lot of questions from people that are, well, how do I get promoted quicker? I've been in this role for one year. I want, I want, I want this, this, and this. I always say patience is what we need to practice because you do need to gain that experience. The, the more customers we talk to, the more partners we talk to, the more we learn, one year is a short amount of time. What's the advice for people that maybe are a little impatient with waiting for that promotion? Yeah, I, I never want to curb their enthusiasm, but right. I do sort of maybe extend their timeline. Uh, I explain to them, do you know what? The worst thing you can do is run too fast. OK, if you get out in the field, it's very, very different. Right. When you're in mm -hmm. role play with a colleague, you know, they're never going to ask you some of those difficult questions. So I always say for longevity, for ease, when you make that transition into that move, do you know what? That incremental six months, 12 months of doing what you're doing today is not wasted time. Right. Yes. For the L in loss is for learning. So every time you make one of those dials and it doesn't turn out to a successful sale, you're learning, you're continually learning. So I, I always, right. always say to anybody coming through the academies, anyone going through associate programs, anyone coming out is never look at that difficult time as a loss. Just look at it as that right. learning. And when you go, you're prepped, you're fully, fully armored. You're ready to go out there and be, be, be a better success. And then when you go into that next role, you'll move to the second role even quicker. Exactly, because you're ready. Yeah, that uh, so in my I, I don't think I ever told you this, but in my new hire training, which was three weeks back in the day at Dell, the um, I think I put up my hand and said, when can I be a leader, a people leader? <laughs> I was 21 years old or 20 years old. So I would like to be a, a sales leader. And um, I still remember the guy is actually still at Dell. And he, we laugh about it all the time because he was giving the session. He was a people leader at the time did not realize what a people leader meant in sales. So any recommendations for the eager Jessica's in the room that want to be a, a people leader that maybe should, you know, what, what skills do you think is required before becoming that? I, I think you need to understand why you want to be a leader. Uh, a lot of people see it as a trajectory or a move to be, but, but, but leadership isn't, you know, um, delegating tasks. You know, leadership is is you really have to have that drive, you know, to remove the me and turn it to the we. You need to be able to empower people around you to, to come on the journey with you. You have to be strategic in your thinking and the leader of others. And I've seen people make the move quickly. And you know what? If you look at a finely tuned engine and one of the cogs fails, the whole thing stops. Oh, so yeah. I think that, you know, 
people sometimes move into leadership for the wrong reasons, right? When you move into leadership, it's not about you anymore. It's about the team and it's about the people around you. So just identify is leadership for you. Right. Because when I move from sales to leadership, I actually move backwards. Yeah. I move backwards in, in you know, in, in, in earnings. Um, I, it, it, it was a whole Same different thing mind shift. To me. <laughs> it was a whole different mind shift. You know, I went from being a peer to a leader and it was tough. Oh, it yeah. was really, really tough. But I think the thing is, you when you move into leadership, you need to look at the lens that you have on, on the outlook. And I have this thing I call the the individual contributor lens, which is very much dedicated and driven towards that end goal. That yeah. leadership lens is when you're looking at everything around you and bringing those other people on the journey. If you feel that you're at that point of having that leadership lens, then you need to make the move. But understand why you really want to be a leader. Right. And that's yeah. where I sit down with people. They're desperate. I say, why do you want to be a leader? Oh, well, I like the idea of being, managing people. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a reason to move into leadership. No, it is not. <laughs> but, but you hear it often. I want to be in charge. I want to see this. I want to do that. And um, yeah, I always ask people, what's your favorite part of your job today? Especially if they're account executives or inside sales. I always ask that question. And if they say they don't like dealing with people's problems or, you know, cha you know, team playerness, I try to lead them. Like, don't go into leadership then because most of the time you are, that point of contact, um, enabling, helping, facilitating, naturally leading. And besides, I think, knowing what you want and knowing why you want to be a leader, is there a way that a person can stand out to a leader like yourself to, to be, you know, potentially thought of of the next leader? Because I think a lot of people want to lead for the right reasons or maybe half of the people want to lead for the right reasons. What are some things that they can really start shining as a individual contributor on their team? Oh, Something it's, that it's, stands it, out like a skill. Yeah. It, it's, it's so simple, right? It, it's, 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 it's being inclusive. You know, I see people that I think have leadership skill before they actually realize that they have leadership skill. They're the people that bring not just their colleagues, but their peers along on the journey with them. You know, it could be somebody that's that's leading their technical um, seller right. into accounts and empowering them to, you know, take on tasks it could be bringing in the wider network inside their organization bringing in the chat the channel partner partner account manager bringing right. in the unstructured data panel partner it's somebody who brings that collective audience together and then leads to that outcome for their customer or for their partner you know it's somebody who doesn't mind putting a hand up and coming up with ideas it's somebody right. who says you know I would like to do this. I would like to do that. It's somebody that wants to attend those leadership calls in, in a listening way, just to get right. that understanding. Yeah. But the, the key thing is, is, you know, when you're a leader, the most important thing is seeing other people around you be successful. So when you see individual contributors having that mindset, you can see that they've, there's a spark of that leadership quality in them. Right. Yeah. And, part of my career journey I was a people leader and then most recently four months ago I came back as individual contributor and the biggest difference like if I had to name one thing is when you're a leader it is kind of a thankless job right it is expected for you to lead and bring things together and inspire where when you're back as an individual contributor when you have some of these leadership skills already, because you've, you know, you've gained that practical experience, sometimes people are shocked because you're, you're an individual contributor and, and they're just, the bar is, I guess, set a little bit lower because you're, you're um, as an individual versus a, a team. So I think that was the most shocking thing is you get lots yeah. of thanks as an IC an individual contributor not as many thanks when you're a leader because it's it, it's expected with the role. Yeah, and I remember somebody said to me recently, you know, I want to go into leadership so I can control my own diary. And I'm like, 
I don't control my own diary. You know, I, I've had, you know, 15, 16 people that I've had to accommodate to their diaries because they're out in the field. You know, my team yeah. were traveling, so I've had to accommodate to them. But All to that time. point, yeah. for me, I think the strongest leaders are those that have been an IC. They've come through yes. that sales aspect so they can lead from the front. They can be relative to their team, yep. but they understand the pain that their team have gone through. I always say to anyone that's new in leadership, don't drive it behind the desk, right? Make yes. sure that you're going into those there. calls with your team so you can understand things change. Oh, yeah. Things constantly change. Um, Especially but, uh, if you've been doing it 25 years, I'm sure constantly changing continually changing and that is the only constant is change in our industry which keeps it fresh and keeps it exciting but yeah I would just say look if you're looking into leadership truly understand why yeah. why you want to go into that and if it's to empower other people's if it's to share other people's success if it's to bring people forward you know some of the biggest successes in my team have been some of the hardest successes in my team and it's where people have left They've gone on to new roles internally or they've gone externally. But I have to then look back at myself and say, when that person joined my team five years ago, where they were to where they are today, they progressed not just as an individual, but they pro progressed as, uh, you know, in, in work, but also yeah. outside of work as well. You know, they've grown, they've got married, they've had children, they bought houses. Um, so there's, there's real, real credit in that when you see someone come in uh, and they progress. Well, I think that's the rewarding thing of being a leader is getting to see that and sticking around and watching, whether it's on LinkedIn or somewhere else to just see the progression. It's, it's, I think that's probably the best part of, uh, of leadership. Yeah. And one of the um, funniest things is when they say things to me that I used to say to them and they use like <laughs> a, an ism as you would call it. And I'm like, right. Okay. Yeah. I can hear myself sometimes. I never want them to be like me. I want them to be them themselves, but yes. you, you hear something you've trained them, something you've supported them on that they yes. truly believe in it and they're using it for their own. So that is an, oh, absolute, I love that. Compliment, an yeah. absolute compliment. And sometimes they don't even notice and no. a small takeaway, right? But it makes me chuckle inside. Oh yeah. So I have like two more questions for you. One is kind of off topic, but I'm curious from your perspective, um, even from a sales, could be a sales leader flair on this question, but could just be on you as, a, as an employee at Dell. Um, what would you say, and I know this topic, AI, right? I like it. I like to talk about AI, but how has that changed over the last, 25 years ai is not new it's new of the accessibility of our day-to-day -day job and tasks but uh, what what has changed in your career in the last two years maybe from an ai perspective whether it's Loads. sales tools notes <laughs> loads no loads sorry oh, loads. so i mean you, you know you know for, for, for me ai is a really ex exciting topic right i mean i lead the the edge business and we're seeing truly that you know uh, i think michael said it on stage at dtw is take your ai to the data and that data is being created at the edge but you know just some of these digital humans um right. there is user cases inside hospitals where they can speak different language and guide people in the right way you know one of my uh things that we were using with ai and i was i was you know questioning it is yep. in my past role uh we were actually using ai to deliver the targets to our sales teams oh cool and they were pretty much bang on wow. so it's absolutely phenomenal and it does feel although ai is not new that we are on the cusp of that journey and i think more people adopting it and we'll see it definitely in that sales industry uh yeah. from you know it supporting us on where to where to fish where to go it yeah. will help us save our sales cycles and help us be more inquisitive ai is there but we cannot forget that human touch yes. um i think ai there's, can be uh, those tools that guide yeah there's a new application um like not new sorry there's copilot and how it works with outlook from a sales perspective i just learned this yesterday you can pay around 250 Canadian dollars. I don't know what that is in American or pounds, but 250 Canadian dollars. And the co-pilot account will read your all your notes, all your emails, all your team's messages, all your PowerPoint decks, and they will send emails back and forth to 
like maybe you and I, after this conversation, it will read this discussion and then it will set up a follow-up meeting if we need to discuss more based on the PowerPoint, based on the notes. And I have one customer that I met this week and they said, sometimes the emails will just be AI generated going back and forth. And then it will set up a meeting in their calendar with a full agenda of what to speak about. And so far it's been very accurate for them. And I just thought, I can't wait to have those functionalities. That excites me. It also worries <laughs> me. I'm a great believer in owning your own destination. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think the thing is for me, is especially when you're researching, you know, I used to go through company reports and, 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 you know, try and read white papers before meeting with customers and things like that, where, where now the, the, the chat beach, BT element of it, I can, I can kind of type those questions in and, you know, I, I, I take 80% of what it gives me, but right. it's pretty much bang on there. And, and, yeah. and it helps you be inquisitive. You know, if you're going into a customer vertical, you'd never sold into before, you know, ask what's happening in that industry. You know, if you think about manufacturing 4.0, we yep. were at Hanover Messi, a massive manufacturing plant. I'd never sold into manufacturing before. But right. it gave me those bite-sized pieces of information quickly that I was able to digest. So when yeah. I was talking to customers, it gave me that ability to be relevant. And that's where I think it, great. it really, really helps us in sales. Yes. Because we can't spend all of our time reading. We have to spend a lot of our time listening. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, giving us those bite-sized pieces of information, atomizing that content, I think is really, really useful in our industry. Agreed. Agreed. Um, one other question I have before we finish here. We've talked a lot about you and your in your career and some of the learnings and some learnings that our viewers can take from. Uh, anything left that you want to share? Any last remaining tips that you could offer someone just starting out in tech sales and how they could advance their career at a normal pace? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I mean, the key thing for me, as I always say to anybody, is build those foundations, right? Every single day is a school day. Every day you're learning. And, and understand, you know, those yeses and understand those no's. Sometimes those knockbacks really help you go into the next call and be prepped. You know, learn your narrative, learn your pitch. Um, it's always nerve wracking. I mean, both you and I have just moved into a relatively new part of our organization. Um, so it's always, always learning, always being inquisitive uh, and never be afraid to, to say you don't know um, yeah. and, and never be afraid to ask. You know, I've got people on my team that are brand new in. I've got people that are tenured and I say to them, there's no such thing as a silly question because we learn from each other. So be inquisitive, use this time wisely get a really strong mental that might not be the obvious one and, and just go for it, right? Bring yeah. your full self to work, go out there uh, and have fun. Uh, if you do it with a smile on your face, it does make the day just that bit brighter. hundred percent. Always, always having fun, always laughing. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for that. Uh, all the career advice, all the information that you shared with us today if anyone wants to connect with you, you're on X, LinkedIn. Yeah, so it's James Hulse Cloud. So oh, yeah. contact me at James Hulse Cloud or, or, or LinkedIn. More than happy to try and answer any questions. I don't have all the answers. As I say, I'm continually learning. But, <laughs> you know, it's always good to meet like-minded people from in and around our industry and, and, and share um, ideas. But thanks awesome. for having me on. Thank you. And... Uh... Hopefully you'll come back on. If you have me. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. So if you have made it this far and you like this type of content, feel free to comment below what other guests I should have on the channel. I do have some upcoming in the next couple of months. I'm very excited to kind of show you a little bit of a different thing on this channel. And again, if you like this type of content, I would appreciate the thumbs up a subscribe and I will see you next week. Take care.